Susan, Happy New Year. How are you doing today, okay? I'm doing great. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me on, as always. You, you got it. Is this a, uh, how does it work with the beat reporter? You know, you've been around a long time and a very good one. How does it work? Do they suggest it? Do they say, this is now your beat? You have no say in it? I mean, you love the A's, and now you go to the Giants. Is it your call? How does it work uh, as far as switching teams in the same city with the second ball club? Let me hear. Go ahead. Well, as, as you know, my esteemed colleague, Henry Shulman, has retired and a huge loss to the Chronicle, of course. Um, he, John Shea, and I all have decades and decades of baseball experience, and um, they approached me about changing beats and... It was a there were a lot of things that went into it, but uh, I've been on the A's for more than two decades, so time for a new challenge for me, and I, I'm looking forward to it. But I have to say, Chris, you know, as you mentioned, I love covering the A's, and I feel so fortunate to have been able to do so as long as I did. Very few writers get the opportunity to cover one team this long, and I haven't covered a different team since I covered the Rangers in the mid-90s. So uh, I, I'm going to get up to speed with a new team, new challenge. It's great at this time of life to have something fresh and different and new. So I'm looking forward to it. But I got to thank everybody with the A's organization, past and present. They were all wonderful to me, starting at the top with Billy Bean, David Forrest, Bob Melvin, and, of course, the fans, the readers who – have read me for so long on the A's. Uh, I hope they stick with me with the Giants. It should be fun. Well, I know how it is. You know, listen, we see, I've seen it in New York with the Mets and the Yankees forever. I, I know the A's, you know, kind of feel a little left out in that market. The Giants with the ballpark, the three recent championships and all that. Are there some folks with that Oakland organization and the fan base, when you look at your Twitter account, that are giving you a hard time for joining the enemy? Have you heard, have you felt some of that in the last couple of weeks? Let me hear. Uh, I've gotten a little bit on Twitter from fans, but, uh, you know, it, in the baseball terms, people jump back and forth between the A's and Giants all the time uh, around here, uh, members of the organization. Uh, Farhan Zaidi came, went from the A's to the Dodgers to the Giants, and, and uh, I think there are still Giants fans that are calling him a Dodger spy. So baseball has tons of movement. I'm not the first beat writer who's changed teams. Uh, and uh, it, it, like I said, I should, it should be fun. I feel like I'm not so much losing a Vescursion as I'm gaining a Russo now, I think. No, they, <laughs> you're right. A's and Giants, well done there. Right, how about this giant team? <laughs> Uh, you know, you'll get up to speed quick enough. And this team, of course, really kind of overachieved last year. Kaplan did a good job, and I was all over them. They were right there into the very end. You know it's a big market. They have money. Eventually, they use it. Beautiful ballpark. The A's, we all, you and I have discussed it forever about the A's park. You don't have to worry about that now with the Giants. What's your sense of how far? They're a tougher division with the Dodgers. But what's your sense of how far they might be away from having a chance to, you know, compete postseason and compete in the division again? What's your sense on that right out of the gate? Well, I, every, everyone can look and see what, what else is happening in that division with the Dodgers and Padres. It's going to be tough for a young team like the Giants. Uh, and of course, they got some big, big contracts potentially coming off the books after this season, some major contributors from the past few years. So uh, they're poised to be very good in a few years. But I think they'd be pretty happy if they managed to do what they did this last year, keep things interesting until the very end. And I, it looks to me uh, like they've got some pieces in place to do that. They're going to need a little luck, though, because that is that division is just getting heavy. The thing to me that really stood out was how strong the Giants finished uh, across the board, maybe with the exception of the rotation, but the bullpen was better the last month or so. The offense really picked it up. The defense was much better. And for a first-year manager, that's a good sign. Uh, and remember, he also, Kepler also has an extremely young coaching staff, uh, with the exception of Ron Wotus. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Uh, and they all have another year of experience now. So uh, I think good things in store. Maybe not this year, but if they keep it interesting, that's a win for them. 100%. You know, the team, is Zaidi will do a good job. They got the ballpark and revenue. Um, uh, back to Oakland for a second. I'm interested here. Who knows on how this pandemic with Tampa and the A's, has it really delayed the uh, dealings with the new park? Is this now on hold? They need a new place to play in the worst way. And in the last 10 months, everything has been stopped short. What's the latest on that? 
Well, you know, the A's for so long had been pointed at 2023 if everything went right for a new ballpark. There's just no way. I, there, there have been too many delays because of the pandemic. Nobody's fault. The A's have been able to check some things off the to-do list when it comes to uh, getting things lined up politically for the new ballpark, but they're nowhere close. Like the environmental impact report is still yet to be released. We had expected it essentially a year ago. So uh, I think very, if they got anything even going in 2024, 2025, they'd be very lucky. Chris, we've talked about it so often. If they wanted to do something a lot more reasonably priced and without a lot of the headaches and obstacles, they've always got that Coliseum site, which they are uh, in the process of buying. So uh, plan B could be a very real thing for them at some point, particularly if they are having the, the sort of financial difficulties that I get the impression that they might be now with a pandemic. Yeah, good one. All right, how long in this scenario where writers haven't had the same exposure with, you know, players as far as, you know, getting to know them a little bit, getting some good, getting some, you know, developing a relationship so you can obviously, you know, break some stories and have some good info, uh, inside info. You haven't been able to do that, the, the writer establishment, for a long time, and now you go to a new team. How tricky is that going to be for you? Let me hear. Well, I know so many people with the Giants already, certainly a, a lot of the people inside the organization, um, and everyone's in the same boat, really with uh, Zoom calls and having things uh, sort of set up by the team. Uh, so in, in that sense, uh, you know, the agents and the scouts and all those people that I, that I talk to a lot anyway, they're all still around. So I'm not too worried about it. And I've got John Shea to lean on. And I can always blame John Shea for anything. If I get smoked on something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's John's fault. And John wrote that great book with Willie Mays. We had him on here. Great job, Susan. We will talk soon. Happy New Year. Appreciate you coming awesome. on here today. Good luck.